Hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips. In this episode we'll be fitting my LC7137 LC7132 Arduino modification to a proper CB radio this time. And that proper CB radio will be this Rotel RVC240. So there's a few things we need to do before we actually fit it. And the first one is to remove its original PLLIC. And there we have it, nicely desoldered and removed. And all the old flux cleaned up. So for the purpose of testing, we will be fitting an IC socket so we can plug and unplug. And the IC socket obviously lives where the PLL IC was removed from. There, a little bit of soldering for you. There we have it, nicely soldered. So what I've actually found is that the pin header that connects onto the end of the ribbon will not go into the socket with this inductor in place. So easy fix is we pop the inductor on the back of the board. Shouldn't make any difference, just gets it out of the way and uh, the pluggable um, pin header now can fit in. So we'll switch on, first transmit test, and it's working. Well, it's working with the original LC7137. Which it should do. Next test is the actual mid band. <coughs> and there we have it. So it seems to lock up. 27404 and 40. It's a little bit down. That could be this frequency counter. And we're not getting anything on channel 1. So I think the VCO needs adjusting, which will be this. So there is a way of doing it with a voltmeter on the test point, which is a resistor just close by. You set it to a certain channel, set it to one volt. But that was easy enough to do. But now we need to adjust the transmit because we're really low on transmit. So the way the service manual says to do it is to put a scope on the output and then adjust three of the um, inductors for maximum waveform on the scope so this is what we're doing here just bringing them up gradually with the scope and that's probably the first inductor and then we go to the second one and as you can see it goes off the scale so we just follow the rest of the service manual in adjusting these inductors 
and sure enough we get a nice healthy 4 watts on the output. Now just to be sure, I'll go to the extremities of the bands and check that each um, band the power is of similar. Now we're just doing a few receive tests. Just to make sure that the VCO is locked everywhere, which it should do. I don't think there's any need to broadband the VCO on this because it seems to lock on all extremities. And at the moment everything seems to work good. So the next test to do is my actual Arduino code. Going through each channel to make sure that every channel is the correct frequency. And that's channel 1, 962. So I'm just cross-referencing against the chart to make sure that all the frequencies are correct. Everything seems to be correct at the moment until we get to that one. And then we go back to 2-4 which is wrong. That should be a different frequency. So that was channel 8. So we'll have a look at the truth table for the input for channel 8. And we'll look at the truth table for the output for channel 8 and see whether they match my Arduino code. So the input code works correctly. And then we'll check the output code. And that's showing three ones. And my code is showing four ones. So obviously a typo when I've done this. So a quick change of the code and a quick upload back to the Arduino. And that's that fixed. All the other channels check out correctly. So that's it for this short episode. In the next part of this, hopefully I'll have a different board. With um, different placements of the components. But anyway, don't forget to like subscribe if you really want put your notifications on it will be very appreciated and thank you everybody for watching and we'll see you in the next episode